talk about it Tuesday. Um, I know I've done it last couple weeks ago, but I decided I wanted to do it on the regular. It's not going to be assigned time to do it, but I am going to do it once every month. The last time I did it was at the end of June. I skipped July because of traveling and vacation and everything. Yes, I am in a sexy outfit because I'm starting to learn and love me and the skin that I am in. So during this presentation, I am going to, or every presentation, I'm going to wear something that makes me feel beautiful inside and out. So welcome to August the 1st. God, I can't believe it's already eight months into the new year. Well, where is the time going? This year is almost over, but <laughs> we need to get things in order. Um, I did this also on my Spotify for podcasters, so it is going to be verbal as well. But I wanted to do something special with the group like I've always done. So I decided to come on live and present what I said on my Spotify to you guys live. So today I was, and I have my tablet because I want to make sure that I do it the same exact way that I did it on Spotify. I don't want to do anything different. The only difference is you see me here, the other one, it's my voice. But today I was looking back on some of my memories and you know how Facebook send you your memories and pictures of things that happened in your past. I don't know how far they go back, but they do it to me on a regular and I enjoy it because it allows me the time to go back and see what I looked like then or whatever the situation was like then to uh, kind of compare the two like six years to now. Um, honestly, I feel like I've grown into who I am from six years ago and um, love myself a lot more than I did then. But inside of that post that I did six years ago, I had one poem in there by this lady by the name of Laura Wilder, and it stated that life is not intended to be simple around your work, no matter how interesting and important that work may be. A moment's pause, meaning when you stop for a moment, everything stops. So you want to continue it. A moment's pause to watch the glory or the sunrise or the sunset is so satisfying. So it satisfies your soul to watch the sunrise or for it to go down. Or if you have a half a moon or a full moon, you know, that's a beautiful sight. Or if you laying back and you see those stars in the sky, that's a beautiful sight to see. But while birds sing in their songs, they set the music, they set that tone for the entire day, for the entire um, season, whatever it is that uh, your season may be at that current moment. So let's talk about over the last couple weeks. I have been posting in the group on the weekly, um, new start, new week, new start, um, what the topic will be on that particular day what's on your mind and this is things that I start to speak about in the chat by starting off with a comment relating to that um, and you're more than welcome to put topics in there as well and speak on that topic and kind of get the group going to generating messages it doesn't have to be just on that Monday when the week begins. It can be any time during the week. I just set the tone, sorry, because technically the week starts on Sunday, but in the worldly world, we want to say Monday. So Monday is the day of the work week begin. So I try to open up that line of communication to set the tone for everybody to have a positive week and, you know, you know just things that they can uh, kind of read back on that might help for that week because we don't know what someone else could be going through. Um, but the first week, it was growth and healing. And I speak about growth and healing a lot because I am in the process of transformation, should I say, in growth and healing and self-love and self-care to start to love myself. So we know with growth, you have to be comfortable and feel safe in order to grow. 
okay? And we know with healing, healing is that process of letting something go that you've held on to. Um, like it took me a while to get over losing my son and my father. Um, but I had to, okay, I guess my time ran out on that particular video in my space. So I'm going to have to stop here and then start recording um, on something else. So I'll attach the videos. Once it cuts off, it cuts off from that part. Um, the next one was productivity, which is the effectiveness of being productive, meaning your effort that you put into, you know, just like the rate of output that you put things out. You want to put that unit into input, things you put out, put in. Um, the third topic was aspirations, and aspiration is your hope and your ambitions that you um, want to achieve or, or something in your life, a, a goal, a standard or something that you are working towards. Um, change, and how do we adjust to change? You know, change is normally something that corresponds, that fits, that conforms, that adapts, that accommodates something new in your life and uh, we know adjusting is kind of regulating trying to work it until the changes that you're trying to do and then the sweet topic was gaslighting and i was truly amazed and astonished by what gaslight actually meant and a lot of us are not aware of that word gaslight but when i did my research and i looked it up and everything wow that's powerful so again, if it cuts off, I'll go back and I'll add all the recordings in. So again, every week I put in the group a topic that we can speak about and generate the chat into the group so that everybody can kind of engage in, you know, daily life or things that people may go through in their life. But, and I also put videos in there. I put mimes, um, messages, motivations, inspiration. I kind of keep it active into the group so that that week topic can relate to those week messages and uh, motivations and stuff like that to kind of help. Um, but you guys, I'm so sorry, you guys can also engage into the chat. Some people want to keep silent voices to humble their tongue and that's perfectly fine. However, you know, it's good to interact in a group to let everybody know because sometimes silence can be poison and nobody wants poison in their body because they get infected with that poison. So we want everybody to be free to speak, free to engage, free to put that. Okay, so clearly you guys know that I told y'all that it was going to cut off. So I had to use my business phone to continue recording this. But I was speaking on um, the silence and being poisoned and how you don't want the uh, body to be formed of infection and everything. So you want to make sure that you release everything out. Um, but that's a part of my aspiration why I do what I do because that's my goal. I'm not here to try to make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. It's just, um, I like touching others, like expressing my experiences and things that I've gone through in life to kind of help the growth and healing that I've gone through help someone else because it, it could be someone else's story. But you gotta make sure that you're comfortable enough to speak your story and present what you're going through so that others can know that they don't have to be afraid, you know, um, it's normal, it's perfectly fine. People talk about Jesus on the cross, they always talk about people and say things, who cares about that? Because I no longer care about that kind of stuff. But it's a form of um, being accountable for things that I do in the group and interacting, engaging, and giving others to do the same as well for their choice, because like I said, it's up to them if they decide that they want to to do that. But like in life, we have to do a lot of adjustments um, with our situations or circumstances, whatever that may be that generates us to get to that point or on that level. But I just wanna explain, like on, on last Tuesday, my caster sent out a text to me and she was saying today we had on Wednesday meeting, which was last Tuesday, she sent out the text at like 3.55. 
watch the meeting starting at six, which is perfectly fine. I mean, I basically live right up the street from church. And I mean, I love my pastor, but I knew when she sent that, that message, okay, like this word is gonna be for me. Didn't even know it was gonna be any teaching and learning because this will be my first um, actual women's meeting. And let me be honest, I haven't been in the church in a couple weeks um, due to a situation that is no longer relevant, but I um, I kind of sat back and standoffish um, for something that took place. And um, I said it to say, when I went there to walk in there and everything is set up, it's new, you know, like a new setup, the arrangements, the chairs and everything was organized to where it is. It was a better view for the preacher, the people who do the teaching as we learn. Um, also, um, just it was more roomy, it was more peaceful. Um, the seating arrangements were just wonderful. But going in on that day, I just knew that this meant new, something new is about to change or happen in my life. And I go in there, and when I tell you that. This woman of God, when she speaks, I feel like she's like my mom from heaven. And you know, God just set her down and said, hey, I need you to go and talk to my child and tell her to listen to my voice and open up her eyes, you know, um, basically like giving me a spanking from my mom. And um, it's, it's just so powerful how the messages from him generate in her and come to me. And um, I love it. I love it. I love it. But anyway, um, it was the topic was about wisdom and knowledge. Okay, wisdom meaning um, the ability, meaning the transformation portion of of life. Um, and it also she also did some readings on. I'm so sorry. I need to make sure because I want to write it exactly like I said it on my podcast. Um, we have to get rid of some stuff or move some stuff out of the way in order to walk through our new now. That's what she was preaching about. And um, new now was so powerful because she gave this example of this man who had a friend that did everything for him and this little girl. And the little girl um, was more like his little side piece on a more um, younger level. And, 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 the guy was more of a more like a daddy level, you know. He couldn't do anything without him, is what he thought, until he decided to walk through his new now. But we have to hold our heads straight and steady and leveled. Okay. We know that knowledge is from our experiences that we go through in life. In order to speak about, to learn from, we have to go through the experience. So everybody has to go through whatever it is that you go through. Because all this stuff is written. I tell you guys this all the time. When I preach in my own, um, well, preach, Lord, not preach, I'm not preaching. <laughs> but when I speak about things in my um, podcast, I say things that relates to that um also she was saying that um she was talking about how we have to this was like a previous bible study she was talking about how you have to have full armor on you know with your head the helmet your shield your arrow and all that stuff and i think i spoke about that a little bit in my podcast too but i'm not speaking about that today um so what that Tuesday women's meeting was about we had one of our sisters in Christ she asked them to pass out these little cut out pieces of paper and it was flipped upside down so we didn't actually know what we were doing and she said everybody pull one so she goes around and get everybody one and when she gets to me there's this one huge one in the middle and the other ones are um, all combined together and it's like she's just doing this and I'm like I don't want that big one. Why are you put that big one in front of my face? I want. She said, I'm not. And I said, oh, okay. So I only figured, I said, okay, well, maybe God want me to pull this one. So I pulled it. I kept it turned over until she was ready to say what we were going to do with it. And she said, um, now everybody take your paper and turn it over. So we turned the paper over. And she said, I want you to read these scriptures and tell me what 
you are going through or what you can relate to about the scriptures. Now, after everybody doing their readings, I only hear everybody read one scripture. And I think I was the second to the last person to go. And um, I'm like, Pastor, I feel like I've been set up. I feel like this is a conspiracy because I had two scriptures and everybody had one. And she's like, oh, you do? And I said, yeah, I do. You know, I'm like, man, I'm feeling unfair. But she was like, no, I didn't do that. You know, and I know she didn't intentionally do it. I know who did it. But the scriptures that I had related to something that I'm probably going through. And the reading of scriptures was just so amazing and so powerful. So my first scripture was Psalm 46. And it said, God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. And that's always been one of my fears is failure. Always. And repeat that, failure. Not being able to stand alone. So that there, that scripture was God confirming that he's got me regardless of whatever situation that I ever come into or endure, he's got me. So that Tuesday stated a lot. One of the things she taught me was when you get a revelation, you have to, that, that revelation, you have to acknowledge that revelation because that revelation gives you strength and power in how to build your house. I'm gonna repeat that word, your, how to build your house. You know, we have to rest free from scatteredness in our minds because we have cloudiness, scattered stuff all over the place, worrying about this, worrying about that, letting other people actions come on us, and we take on that as well. But in order to be at peace, you have to clear all of that and walk into the new now. And, and that's what she was teaching about and telling when this Miss when Miss when Lori, because she's in a group when she preaches. I promise you, I feel like I'm sitting in a college course class and she's the professor and I better have my pen and paper down because I acknowledge everything she says. I write down everything she says and not just from that moment I take and I still study the things that she said because it's a great tool to have. Now, my second scripture was Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And that's the one thing I also have to learn, not to be afraid to walk away and start my new now for the better later. I'm gonna repeat that. I've got to learn not to be afraid to walk away and start my new now for my better later. One of my favorite words is the word endure. And I know throughout my podcasts as I'm speaking into the group, you may hear that word endure a lot because that's one of my favorite. Um, and she spoke that word up. I heard that word. So that was another form of confirmation for me. But endure means something difficult or something painful that people go through, which kind of ties into our daily life situations and changes you no longer have to allow these things to last or remain existence into our lives we don't have to do that so this brings me to this week's topic which i put in a group on yesterday and that's gaslighting and keep in mind i've never heard of this word gaslighting until here recently and seeing a lot of movies with that title gaslight man i tell you it's it's just Amazing. So I said, let me look a little bit deeper. Let me research what this word means because it's frequently being shown, frequently being said. Um, and you know, God speak to you through movies, through songs, through all kind of events and everything. So that was my key to research. And as I researched and I read and I studied and I seen, I had to realize that, hey, this God telling me that this is this is me. And uh, yeah, I, I am definitely a victim of that word gaslighting. And let me just explain to you or define the word gaslighting. Gaslighting is when someone manipulates you through the psychological um, method and wanting to have power and control of everything. 
Um, they can go hand in hand with a narcissist as well, but more or less gaslighting is a more mental and it can affect your mental health. So you have to make sure that you try to uh, separate it if you possibly can. But it's hard, you know, it's up to you to deal with certain situations. So make sure because gaslighting is toxic. It is a form of abuse and um, it's, it's emotional, very emotional. Um, and everybody has emotions. But their questioning or their reason and sanity is totally up to you. It's you know, to them, not to you. It's up to you to deal with it if you want to. But some of the traits and signs that you need to be aware of if you're in that situation is these people like to be highly manipulative, okay? They like being highly controlling. They would try to cover up for their insecurities and their doubts that they have with themselves and make you feel like it's your fault. Um, calling out other people's flaws and they're never wrong, right? They're perfect, okay? And they're no self-esteem because their self-esteem is low. They start to get the jealous rivalries and thinking other things is what it really isn't. But that's what just they just want to go in their mind. So try to make sure that you um, set healthy boundaries if you're going to deal with someone with that gaslight type of disease. Be sure you practice self-confidence and self-worth. So you can know who you are as an individual. You know, start loving on yourself. I always say self-love, self-care, self-worth, self-adjustment, um, self-growth, self-healing, self-productivity, self-aspirations. I mean, self-changes, self-adjustments. All of this stuff is self. <laughs> you know, so learn to love yourself with all of that. Um, there are some ways that if you want to continue being with your gaslighter, they have to want to change, okay? So most of them don't feel they have a problem. They really don't acknowledge that this is going on. It's just like, it's like turning a shirt inside out and you're the wrong side of that shirt. Um, you know, some people put on a shirt and they get frustrated because they can't get it right. Um, that that's that's what that is um they have to want to acknowledge that they have the problem because again like i said they won't say it because they don't feel like they have the problem nobody's perfect in a relationship at all so you're gonna have things that you may be wrong at they may be wrong at but when you're the one that they're constantly targeting and you're dealing with it, you seem to be the one that knows the problem because you're on the outside and you're going there doing it too. And then they have to make effort to change their unhealthy behavior. Again, that's them, not you. But sometimes what they do or project on you can cause your mental to mess with you. And then you start picking up their traits and their ways. And then now uh, you both have problems. So it's up to you at the end of the day if you want to do it on your timeline and your watch or if you want that to be someone else's problem totally up to you so let's talk about it tuesday was called combination of these everything that i've gone over for these last couple of weeks is what i combined in one let's talk about it video I thank you guys for watching and again I said I'm going to start doing this once a month so that the weekly topics can be combined of, of what we speak about in order to kind of engage more into the group. So have a great day, uh, great morning, great afternoon, whatever time it be you're watching this video and uh, let's stay engaged, let's stay involved, okay? See you later.